the first controls we're going to build are simple play and pause buttons. And then we'll create a play pause toggle button like you see here in the final version where we can toggle between them. All right, so let's go over to our code. And the first thing we're going to do is add elements for our play and pause buttons. We're going to put them in the video controls div. And so I'm going to create a div for our play button with the ID of play underscore button. And I'm going to put some text in it. And we'll put play and the div. All right, and let's do another one for our pause button. An ID of pause underscore button. And we'll give it a text of pause and end the div. Now, let's see, let's save that and go look at our browser and open up the page and reload it. Okay, so we have both play and pause there, but they're kind of smushed together. So let's now go and style them. I want to style them the same way. So I'm going to give them both a class of player dash button. I'm going to copy that class and paste it to the pause button as well. Okay, so now they both have the same class. And let's go to our CSS. We're going to style that. The class was player dash button. And first we'll give it a width of 50 pixels. So they'll be a little bit wider. And we want the text to be centered on the button. So we need to do text align center. And finally, these are buttons. So we want the cursor to kind of turn into the pointer when we roll over them. So we can do that with CSS through cursor pointer. All right, let's save that and then look at it again. Reload it. Good, so now we have our play and pause button and they're spaced apart. And you can see when we roll over them, we get the, the little pointer. All right, so now let's go make these work in JavaScript. Go to our JavaScript file. I'm going to stay inside the DOM ready block here. Move a couple down. And let's first make a section for it just to divide everything up. It's a little separator. And now we're going to use the jQuery selector to select our play button, which had an ID of play underscore button. And what we can do now is bind to the click event. So jQuery allows us to pretty easily cause things to happen when an event happens. And we do that by binding to an event. And the div has a click event that we can bind to. And so we want to bind to the click event. And when that happens, we can pass a function to the event that we want to happen when the click happens. So I'll end that line. I'm going to drop this down. And so what we put in here is what we want to happen when the click happens. And so we have a reference to our video element, and that is the video variable. So we're going to use that. And then the video element has a play method on it that we can call to play the video. And so to summarize, we're selecting our play button and saying we want to bind to the click event. And when the click event happens, we want the video to play. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the pause button. And actually, I can go ahead and just copy that whole line and paste it down. We want to change the ID now to pause button. We're still binding to the click event. But now we want the video to pause. And the video element has a pause function that we can call as well. OK, so let's go ahead and save that and go to our browser and reload and try this out. All right. Both play and pause work as expected. OK, now let's go build that uh, play pause toggle button from the final version here, where we can kind of toggle between play and pause like you might expect from a normal video player. All right, so let's go to our HTML first. And I'm going to delete our pause button, because we're just going to go down to one button. I'm going to modify our play button. I'm going to just rename it to play toggle. 
So we're going to call it. And we're going to keep it the class of player button and keep the text to play. So let's save that. And then we don't have to do anything CSS. We'll go to our JavaScript. And now let's kind of do the same thing. We'll start a new one and use jQuery to reference this new button of play toggle. And again, we're going to be binding, sorry, bind to the click event. And we're going to pass a function that we want to happen when the click event happens. And this time, we're going to check if the video is currently paused. And we can do that with an if statement. And the video element has a paused attribute that we can check just to see if the video is currently playing or if it's paused. And so if the video is paused, what we want to happen is for the video to play. If it's paused and we click the button, we want the video to play. Otherwise, so else, we want the video to pause, so just like we did in the pause button. So if the video is paused, we want it to play. And if the video isn't paused, we want it to pause. All right, now there's one more step we want to do, and that's to change the text as we're clicking play and pause. We want the text on the button to change. And so we can use jQuery again to select our button, but we don't need to use the ID again because in the scope, we're actually in the scope of the button already. So we can actually use this. This will refer to the button. So we want to say this, and then we can use the HTML function of jQuery, which will change the contents of our button. We want the contents of our button now to say pause. So if the video is paused, we want it to play, and then we want the text on the button to say pause. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing for play. And let me end those lines and save that. Okay, so now if the video isn't paused, we'll pause it and change the button text to say play. Okay, let's save that and go to our browser and reload. We'll click play. All right, and the text changed to pause. We can click it again, and it pauses the video and changes the text of the button to play. All right, so that's how you build some basic play pause buttons. And now we'll build a play progress bar.